The Imperial Japanese Navy possessed a wide variety of battleships, with the most common ones being known from the Second World War, which are essentially the Kongo class, Fuzo class, Issei class, Nagato class, and of course the Yamato class. It is safe to say that Japanese battleships were very unique in the Second World War to Japan in specific, however it's also safe to say that at their basis they are heavily influenced by Western technologies, particularly Great Britain. Japan isolated itself from the rest of the world until the mid-1850s when the United States forced Japan to open its borders to trade with the Western nations. Japan would fall into a civil war, and eventually the emperor would be re-established as the head of the Japanese government, located in Tokyo. This would begin the Meiji Restoration under Emperor Meiji, and the Imperial Japanese Navy would purchase its first metallic warship, and this was the ex-Confederate ironclad CSS Stonewall. The Meiji Restoration would see the Japanese Navy transform itself from a coastal fleet into a blue water fleet, primarily because Japan was going to form itself like a western nation, rather than being colonized like most of Asia, and Japan would begin forcing its influences on Korea, which, much like Japan itself, had also isolated itself from other nations for over two centuries. A game changer in naval warfare was when Great Britain launched the HMS Royal Sovereign in 1891, this would become known as the first pre-dreadnought, setting up the standard combination of features that we would see until 1907 with the introduction of HMS Dreadnought itself. Japan was fast to hop on board the new train, and in 1894 they would order their first two battleships from Great Britain, since Japan did not have the ability to construct this type of warship yet. The two brand new battleships would become the Fuji class, consisting of Fuji and Yashima. The Fuji would be constructed at the Thames Iron Works in Blackwall, while Yashima would be constructed at the Armstrong Ellswick Yard in Newcastle. Both battleships would take three years to construct, and they would be completed in the summer of 1897. The Japanese would benefit greatly here, particularly because of the experience the British had gained in constructing the Royal Sovereign class. The Fujis at the basis were just like the Royal Sovereigns, However, there were various improvements, such as enclosing the guns within protective turrets, rather than having the guns exposed to the elements. Both ships would participate in the Russo-Japanese War, during which Yashima, while operating around Port Arthur, would strike two mines and subsequently sink while under tow several hours later. Fuji would survive the war and carry on until 1922, when she was reclassified as a transport, and she would carry on service until 1945 when the Empire of Japan lost World War II, and the ship would eventually be scrapped in 1948. The next class of pre-dreadnoughts the Japanese would order would occur in 1897, and this would become the Shikishima class, with Shikishima being ordered from the Thames Iron Works, and Hatsuse being ordered from Armstrong Ellswick. Much like the Fuji class, the British had gained more experience when they had constructed the Majestic, so these two battleships would be largely based off Majestic, however upon completion they were compared to the brand new Formidable class. The history behind these two ships almost mirrors the two Fujis. Hatsuse struck a mine while operating around Port Arthur on the same day Yashima struck its two mines, and while under tow, the Hatsuse would hit another mine and this would detonate its after magazine, foundering the ship, while the Shikishima would survive the war going into combat many times and being reclassified in 1921 as a coastal defense ship, then being used as a training ship, and then in 1923 being used as a transport, and she would carry on service until 1945 when Japan loses World War II and she would be sold for scrap in 1948. Up next we have the Asahi, which was also ordered in 1897 since Japan was quickly building up its battleship fleet, and this one would be ordered from the John Brown shipyard at Clydebank. The Asahi was the heaviest battleship constructed on the Clyde to that date, and in many respects it was a copy of the HMS Formidable, however there were various technical differences such as the armor scheme and the propulsion system. The Asahi would participate in both the Battles of the Yellow Sea and Tsushima, and the ship would go on to survive the Russo-Japanese War, carrying on until 1920 when she was declassified as a coastal defense ship, 
and then in 1922 declassified further into a training ship and the vessel would carry on in this role until the 25th of May 1942 when she was torpedoed by the United States submarine Salmon. This brings us to the next battleship ordered in 1898 from the Vickers Sons Yard in Barrow and Furness. This would become the Mikasa. Mikasa was largely based off the Asahi, which was in its own respect based off the Formidable. Now, Mikasa has various improvements over the Asahi. Once again, the propulsion system is tuned up, making the ship the fastest in the fleet as far as battleships go. And her armor system is different as it covers a larger portion of the ship than what had been previously seen on Japanese battleships. Mikasa would famously participate in the Russo-Japanese War as Admiral Togo's flagship, and the vessel would survive until 1905 when she sank at the safety of Japanese waters by a magazine explosion. The vessel would be raised and fixed until 1921 when she ran aground and was not recovered until 1923, being declassified as a museum ship, which the vessel remains as today, being the only example of a pre-dreadnought left for us to look at. Japan would not order another class of battleships until 1904 when they ordered the two Katori class battleships with Katori coming from the Vickers Yard in Barrow and Furness and Kashima coming from the Armstrong Yard in Newcastle. Neither ship would be completed until the spring of 1906 which means they miss out on the Russo-Japanese War. However, upon completion they are considered the best battleships on the globe often being compared to the HMS King Edward VII. These two battleships would be the final Japanese battleships constructed abroad. From here on out, Japan would build its own battleships within its own yards. Due to missing out on the Russo-Japanese War, the Katori class had relatively inactive careers as far as battles go, so they would mainly float around priding themselves as Japanese battleships, until 1921 when the Washington Naval Treaty would see both of them disarmed and used as training ships and Kashima would be sold for scrap in 1924 and Katori would follow it a year later. This brings us to our next class of battleships. This would be the Satsuma class consisting of Satsuma and Aki. Both of these ships would become the first Japanese battleships built by Japanese yards with Satsuma being ordered from the Yokosuka Yard and Aki being ordered from the Kire Yard. This is a scenario where first time is not the charm. The Satsuma and Aki would both be laid down in the spring of 1905. However, Satsuma would not be completed until 1909 and Aki until 1911, which means by the time these battleships were done, they were horrendously out of date. They are often considered superior to the HMS King Edward VII, however, they were considered inferior to the HMS Lord Nelson, which began construction the same year as these two, however, it was completed in a far more efficient amount of time. Both ships would remain inactive during World War I, and after the Washington Naval Treaty was signed in 1921, they were declassified as target ships, and during September of 1924, both would be expended, Satsuma being sunk from gunfire from the brand new battleship Nagato and the Aki being sunk by gunfire from the battlecruiser Gongo and the battleship Yuga. With that having been said, that is a basic introduction to Japanese pre-dreadnoughts. So if you have enjoyed this video or learned something new, why not leave a like and a comment down below and have a wonderful day.